welcome back to Hell Fortress Cathedral Midnight, the Enochian Terror Transmissions. Today I'm going to be talking to Sophie Dunn, who's a noted genius, scholar, and guitar player for the band Girlfriend, and a beloved gig promoter in Dublin City and beyond. We're going to talk about the state of the gig scene in Ireland, a little bit about um, Sophie's fantastic band, which you should listen to. And uh, a little bit about um, music school and why it sucks. Enjoy. You're going. You got. You got the recording going. Yeah, I've been recording the last few minutes anyway. Excellent. I'm excellent. Speaking a little bit. I decided to you just can... use Reaper as well. I was trying to get Logic to connect up, but apparently you have to like pay for some app to do it. So I was like, Nah, I'm not gonna do that. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck I that. love Reaper. Reaper's great. Like. It's basically free, although I've paid for it. I paid for it once I started like properly releasing stuff for money. Mm. Um, but it's class. Like you can do anything. Like I've I've performed live like using Reaper. I think I I don't know if you're an Ableton person, but I think Ableton is a fucking scam. Personally, people 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 say I'm completely wrong, and I might be, but I'm just like, it's expensive. It's it looks like you're. It's like operating alien technology. I don't like it at all. I actually completely agree, and I've had people like come at me for saying that as well because i really don't like it i find it really not user friendly and i have a really hard time with technology music technology anyways so you know i need it mm. to be like baby easy reaper does that for me i actually i got a mac for my birthday so i decided i'd buy logic as well and that's super easy to use i'm mostly just using it for demoing um mm. but yeah fuck ableton it's really stressful you working on solo material um a little bit kind of um Ooh. not too much though i was a little bit trying to trying to get some electronic music together some dance music because i had a couple mm. of people who wanted to like collaborate maybe do a set together um but we just didn't get to meet up because of the pandemic God, yeah. but yeah i'm kind of dipping into that but the band is kind of getting its, itself back on the road again so we're trying to focus on that and like get a record out basically that's what we're trying to do at the moment so it's a bit oh, stressful that- to like balance it all I know that feeling very well. Um, that the exact the idea of a of a full on uh, girlfriend record is uh, pretty exciting. Like uh, your band, like your band is fucking fantastic. As well as the the idea of like you doing solo stuff because like I know in that kind of music that you just play, um, while the guitar stuff is very kind of like I don't know if complex is the word, but it's very like. God, I'm 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 losing I'm losing words. It's a difficult genre to like compose like guitar to, um, yeah. but it's also guitar is also very subdued. Like the guitar isn't really flashy uh, like in some other genres. So it would be really interesting to hear solo stuff from you where it's like bringing your creative voice to the fore. Because girlfriend does seem to be like such a collaborative uh, thing. Yeah, thank you so much for those kind words. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, it definitely is like a big collaborative project. And that's why it's been so like difficult to actually make music together because people have been moving around. We all actually lived together up until pretty recently and then we got evicted. So that sucked. Um, yeah, so we've all had to move back in with our parents and stuff. And like our drummer also broke her leg. Like, oh, no. God, like last year, I feel like that was. And that was like awful for her. We couldn't play then, obviously. And then we were kind of like taking care of her at her house. But it was kind of it was kind of fun at the same time. So we just like watched movies and chilled out. But yeah, it's been hard to kind of like like everyone is finding. It's just hard to if you're not like already a pretty well established like career musician. It's really hard to find the time to actually collaborate and like write music together and just get into a room. So that's why I'm kind of it looking at the- doing the, the solo stuff a little bit more because I'm like, I don't know, I'm kind of, I have a bit more extra time now. I don't have a job right now either because I got evicted. So um, I have a little bit extra time. So I'm like, I need to get back into the swing of that, I think. Definitely. I mean, it's always, you know, creating stuff. It's always, a, it's never a waste of time. That's for sure. But mm-hmm. that, 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 you hear that story so many times and it's, it's great that girlfriend have, haven't fallen apart and, you know, are still going strong as, as strong as you can make it because, you, you hear that story so many times in this country and especially from dublin like bands that like burst onto the scene everybody loves them they're like like every, uh, they release an ep or an album and every, uh, you know everybody's super excited or or they never record anything and they're just like the stars of their little um you know gig scene and then just the crushing bullshit of trying to survive in dublin destroys them completely like it's so sad 
Absolutely. And I think that's really what I'm seeing with like all the people that I actually went to music college. I went to BIM. Um, wasn't really for me, but I did get to like meet loads of new people. I played in loads of different types of bands. Um, girlfriend got a bunch of really sick opportunities out of it. So I'm like super thankful that I did that. Um, but I've noticed like everyone who was kind of in our year or like a, a, above us, um, probably I think they would have graduated last year. Um, gone. All the bands are just gone. I'm like, obviously the pandemic has hit and it's kind of hard to tell who's actually still playing music and who's like finito. But yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. I think once everyone kind of leaves college and then like the pressure of like life comes at you, it's Dublin is a very like ruthless place to like be a working musician or be attempting to be even like a part time musician. Um, yeah, it's not great at the moment. It's really not. I don't even know anyone who still lives in Dublin, really, who's playing music, except for like maybe one or two friends of mine. But that's it. The, the really unfortunate thing about, I mean, the really unfortunate thing about the pandemic, what about it, it, it isn't unfortunate, but when it comes to live music is that I really feel like just before everything shut down, kind of all these musicians uh, in disparate genres were kind of taking a look at each other and being like, hey, well, why don't we all just play shows together? Why, do, why, like, why is this metal? Why are people playing their little metal band circuits? Why are people playing like their rock band circuits, their electronic band circuits? Like, why don't we all just fucking play shows together? And there was a really, really interesting momentum building. And then it just fucking, it was stopped. It was cut dead. Yeah, it got pandemic. murdered. It got fucking executed by this fucking pandemic for sure. And I, I agree. I think there was a lot of, really like funky lineups going on and like really nice collaboration between people who weren't kind of st i hate that like being stuck behind a genre boundary shit it's, it's silly it's really silly to me because i think you deny yourself so many like creative opportunities and like having so much fun at the show when there's like different types of music being played um i think people who were really great for that are like well there still exist but obviously can't put on gigs at the moment diy lk and limerick really really excellent um independent group of people who are all musicians in loads of different types of bands and visual artists and all that kind of stuff and they put on some great shows and yeah it's just disappointing that like maybe that won't continue now like maybe we'll see a complete flip of the music industry which will be interesting i mean everyone's kind of going crazy at the moment that there's like the government isn't supplying any kind of roadmap for us to get back at live events so that will be interesting itself to see how that develops but yeah, I do hope that that kind of like cross genre, like going crazy lineups, like crazy gabber and then like an acoustic person playing before them. I love that. Like that's that's yeah, I want an experience when I go for a night out. Like I don't have a lot of money. A lot of people don't have a lot of money. So you want to pay like between five and ten euro and get like an experience. I feel like definitely. And like different types of music hit better when they're like between wildly different types of music anyway if you're listening to all things as the one type it's it, it gets numbing like definitely and i think that's kind of for me a little bit of an issue with the existing kind of commercial irish music industry where the same kind of 5 10 20 people are getting asked to play high profile concerts and it's like it's really frustrating and boring to me like even a lot of the pilot gigs that they've been running with kind of the cordoned off areas and like benches for one family to sit here and sit there. And I mean, you have to test these things out, but like it's even the same 10, 20 artists that have been getting these kind of higher paying gigs for the last like three, four years. And that's kind of disheartening, I think in itself. And you got to wonder where these come from, like bands like fucking like the Coronas and uh, what are they? What are those fuckers called? DC? Oh, don't, don't even get me started DC. about that. Yeah. And, uh, like, where do, they, where do they come from? You gotta wonder. Money, I assume. Yeah. But, like... You know, the, the lead singer of the Coronas, his mother is actually Mary Black. You know that singer? That's actually his mom. So that's obviously where he got into it. And then, as far as I know, Fontaine's, yeah, kind of just, like, fell in with the right crowd and went to BIM. Like, as far as I know, just kind of buzzed around Dublin, being cool, wearing post-punk clothing, and made it. <laughs> Fair play to them. Got they got a, nominated got for what agent. was it, like a Grammy or something? Pfft, I'm not, I'm not nominated for a Grammy, so fair play to them. Yeah, but. I mean they're not they're not bad. Like especially when you compare them to something like fucking uh, Aslan or, or the Coronas or whatever. Mm. Like they actually have a bit of teeth to them. But like I think a lot of this a lot of this comes down to getting representation and promo and agents and all that. And 
it's not easy and it's not cheap, but uh, it's definitely doable. I think I think your band definitely has a shot shot in that kind of thing. And also, like, I I really do think that when the things open up again, I don't think it is gonna be. I don't. I think it's gonna come back from the dead. Certainly, it just we it just things need to fucking open up. Like what what some I saw something in the news this week, and I'm not entirely sure what it was. It was that that they were going to open up gigs and they decided not to or something like that do you know what the crack was with that as far as i know it was kind of being said for the last few months now I, this could be wrong as well i don't know i try not to keep up with the news too much because it actually just brings me down at this stage i only kind of read it once a week um but as far as i know it was like they wanted to start like trying indoor gigs in august late august um and i guess right. that's just like not happening now i don't right. know I like I don't even know I don't like, like they're giving us no information and I just keep seeing like people posting petitions and like letters to TDs email your TD let's do this let's do that but I don't know like if we'll even see indoor gigs or gigs as we knew them before like this end of the year I'd say maybe 2022 we might right. but I don't know but again like the government mm-hmm. is kind of just doing whatever they want and like changing the rules whenever they want so who can say who can really say like we wouldn't have this problem if we had basements in this country. We could just exactly. put on shows in everyone's basement. <laughs> I was literally saying this to my friends the other day. I was like, why don't we have basements? Like, that would be so sick if we could just put on shows. And I don't know. That's a question of, like, is that going to be safe, though? And, like, how would that be policed if if COVID yeah. is an issue? And, like, is there going to be anti-vax people coming to your gig? And, I mean, I don't know how to deal with all that. But it's, I doubt it's the people difficult. coming to my shows would be. But, yeah. <laughs> You never know. Like I've I've been around like socialists and stuff lately who have been like, oh, I don't know about that vaccine. I don't know about those side effects. And I'm like, seriously, uh, like the gaslighting f- uh, from the I I, I, I want to see the far right, but I don't know who the fuck is really behind the whole anti-vax movement. It's got to be the far right, but mm-hmm. like is so potent that it is really just getting the people, working class people, and making them question the the effic- the you know the vaccine or or what it does. It's it's quite frightening how how people you know that's so soaked into people's minds definitely and i think it's definitely like a lot of individualism i feel like a lot of people being like well i don't care i'm not putting that in my body and i'm not doing this but if you don't put that in your body then you're gonna put covid in someone else's body potentially and like really fuck their life up maybe you know like i don't know i feel like yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a weird one over here. I don't really know where the anti-vax sentiment is coming from in Ireland because, like, to go to school, your child has to be fully vaccinated and, like, a bunch of other things you have to have vaccinations for to go travelling, to do this, to do that and the other. And I don't know if it's coming from the kind of America or if it's coming from the kind of new wavy kind of people who are into holistics and stuff like that. But it's weird to me, yeah. And as you said, it's definitely, like, seeping into the working class kind of yeah i don't know it's weird it's weird i think definitely the far right jumped on that bandwagon of like small business owners should be able to open up everybody should be able to open up the whole anti-vax people really jumped on that and i feel like a lot of small business owners working class people fell into that because of their own kind of individual priorities and then you go down the whole rabbit hole i feel like if you if you even like dip your toe with that kind of ideas and those kind of people i think it's hard not to honestly to go down that rabbit hole because like cu- culture is already so kind of fucked at the moment like your average lad on the street probably listens to Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan's going to point them at turfs turfism yeah. and anti-vax and 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 straight up fucking nazism at points and mm. and I mean you actually you actively you not only do you have to avoid falling into that thing uh, getting sucked into that thing if you're not like actively seeking out every narrative you can and, and trying to figure things out but you also need people around you to be like like i like i'll be honest like i, w- I would have become a fuck probably would have become a fucking turf if my ma hadn't been like like five or six years ago been like you know you know that's bullshit right you know i know mm-hmm. trans people and blah 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 blah. Uh, like it's it's so easy to fall into these fucking things um but yeah i don't know <laughs> i want gigs again man yeah i know I <laughs> they're really ruining it gigs. for everyone I miss dancing, I miss partying, I miss meeting new people and like, I miss putting on shows as well. I was kind of doing that for a while and that was really fun. Yeah, but... you put on some really good shows. I remember that one noise show upstairs. And, um, ah, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, upstairs. I appreciate you coming to that too because that was kind of a, oh God, are people actually going to come to this or is this just like me and my friends like 
static pipe dream that we just want to like listen to static in this room and hope for people to show up but it actually worked out and we did a couple of those uh it was it was mostly me and uh Ailish that i play with in girlfriend she also plays under the name ice bear yeah um and she really helped put those together and did a lot of the art for the gigs that i put on like the the posters and stuff so that was sick um but yeah i don't know how that's gonna go in the future if i'm still gonna do that i think there's a real thirst for this kind of stuff in this country especially now especially with the connectedness on the internet because um you know kind of music types will be going online and talking to people in like los angeles and people in like uh france and people in other countries and and they see that a lot of these places have like vibrant like noise scenes that intersect with the punk scenes and intersect with like the emo scene or whatever and and a lot of you, you have shows where there's like weird experimental stuff coming out and like you see that just like cool fucking people go to these shows and you're like why the fuck don't we have these here i'd love to hang out and meet a bunch of weirdos and like watch someone lie on the ground and scream like the fact that you're like making that a thing here is, yeah. is great like there actually is a fucking a big thirst for that i think uh, for some actual like weird art yeah i definitely agree and i think that's kind of where it came from for like me to do i was like i want to see these types of shows i want to see my friends bands so like i'm gonna try and put them on and it worked out that i was actually like working at the venue that i was putting the shows on in so i kind of was given a little bit of a budget i was able to pay people i was able to get posters made but like if you're out here on your own trying to do a diy kind of promotion thing like you either have to have money you either have to work like a full-time job to get money to invest in it or like you just need to fully DIY it and like do it in your back garden or like do it in a warehouse or like find somewhere. That's the thing as well that's like so going to be lacking now in Dublin because all the DIY spots are gone. They've been knocked down for hotels. So like what's, how's that going to look now? Like how's, how's the kind of independent DIY scene going to look now that we don't really have like any even like squats to go to <laughs> every squat i know of is kind of gone now so my theory is um like ga centers and stuff like that community centers and stuff like that um in in places like fucking uh, maynooth and cabin and meath and stuff i mean uh, i'm certainly considering asking around places when it gets a little less dodgy to put on gigs and and, and i think that might be a way an avenue to explore definitely yeah, I think that's a great idea, actually. And that would be, that's kind of something that I've been thinking about a, a lot for a long time as well. Because where I live now, back with my parents is kind of, it's a little bit rural. It's like semi-rural. Basically, I need a car to get around and stuff like that. And it kind of reminds me when I was growing up and being like an angsty emo teenager. <laughs> and there was nothing to do around here. There was nowhere to go. Like, you spent your days, like, drinking in a field, listening to music off your phone. And it's like... Imagine if there had been like people independently putting on like weird shows in your area that you could have went to on like a Friday or Saturday night in the community center. I think maybe that's what's kind of missing at the moment from the music scene as well. The kind of just like willingness to invite your community in like where you actually live. And I think that can be hard for a lot of us because we've had such like negative experiences in the places we've grown up yeah. in. But I think going forward, we're going to have to go back to that and like foster those kind of environments like really locally yeah i definitely know a couple of pu a pubs that are really friendly to like weird gigs but they're in the middle of nowhere like well one of them's in calvin town which is hardly the middle of nowhere but it's kind of out of reach of some people and then the other one is yeah. in king's court which is in the middle of nowhere but um yeah there are there are a good few like because because in the countryside actually you get like big like metal scenes popping up in the countryside where they never actually get to because because it's it's similar to how things fall apart in dublin just, you know, the people that they're, they can't drive or whatever and they need to find a job and then they end up going to college in Dundalk or whatever and it all falls apart. But, um, yeah, there are, there, there, I think there, there's a lot of areas up in, in, uh, there's a lot of rural, uh, pubs and stuff that, that are, that are really, uh, gig friendly for sure. They, if, if people have the will to actually travel up there and go to them. Yeah, that's the thing as well. It's like, will people actually do that? Maybe because we've been locked up for so long. That's the thing. If we kind of, put those kind of things together when things do start to like loosen up a little bit and we can kind of start to put gigs on safely maybe people will go but that's the thing it's just like what's gonna happen I know. it's kind of exciting it is it i'm is trying to be exciting. positive about it because it's been so like boring and negative for so long around the arts around like leaving your house yeah so 
Yeah. I've been. Can you hear me? My Discord's freaking out a little bit. I can't actually see. Okay, yeah, cool. I can hear you. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just didn't get any visual feedback cool. of audio coming in. Um, that's like I've been really hitting it hard, um, making like metal stuff. Because I'm just, like, fantasizing about striking up mosh pits and stuff like that. Despite the fact that it's just me and I don't have, like, a drummer or anything like that. I've just been like, man, I, I just want to fucking go out there and play some, like, metal gigs again. Um, you just want to rock! I love that. that yes, exactly. <laughs> especially especially because, like, doing live electronic stuff is so complicated. And you're always in danger of, like, your computer going out or, or glitching or whatever the fuck. But, you know, if you if you get a band together, it's 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 considerably less complicated to actually get some music going. Although Definitely. it does obviously have its hurdles. And I think you're more likely to, like, get opportunities to play as well. I think a lot of promoters and people like that are, like, looking for a band more than a single artist. But, like, again, there's other promoters who just, like, want a single, like, electronic artist as well. But that's that's so cool that you're, like, branching out. I really enjoy your music as well. Like, oh, thanks. across all the genres, like, you're, you're a really talented person, I think. So oh, well, stick at it. And I hope you much. find a good drummer because I can't drum. <laughs> and if I could, <laughs> I would be getting that double kick out. I'd be doing those blast beats for you. Oh. I'll, I'll keep <laughs> an you. eye out and see if I know anyone who's who's looking to do that kind of stuff. Metal drummers are like hen's teeth in this country. Well, my, they're like hen's teeth in Dublin. I'm sure there's some skulking around in Cavan who'd, who'd, who'd be interested. I just need to pull them out of the bog. Yeah. Um, but let's let's go back to uh, talking about your projects, getting the full podcast mode. How yeah. did um, Girlfriend start? And how what, what are the origins there? Um, well, basically, um, Girlfriend currently consists of myself, Sophie, I play guitar and I sing a little bit and I do some screaming and wailing, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. We have our singer, Hannah. Um, she's also learned how to play guitar a little bit. And we're all kind of, that's the thing now at the moment, we're kind of all swapping instruments and doing, trying to branch out a little bit. We have Ailish, who plays synth. She also plays guitar and me and her kind of share the job of bass too. And then we have Lahela, our drummer, and she sings and drums as well and plays a little bit of keyboard. So we're all kind of jacks of all trades, but basically our origin was that I was in this is like such a funny story but I was in a folk band and I was like the crustiest like I was like metalcore like was wearing like Meshuggah t-shirts to the folk gig at the like co-op in the countryside like it was very funny um play guitar in this folk band and we were looking for a lady singer girl singer and we I think we posted up on Facebook or something this is when I was like maybe 14, 15, so it's a long time ago. I'm 23 now, and that's how I met Hannah. She actually like auditioned for the band, joined the band. We became like best friends, left that band because it wasn't so good. Um, and then we were like, shit, we should like make our own band. That would be so cool if we could just make our own band. And at the time as well, we were like, we're never working with men again because we had a really negative experience in that last folk band that we were both in, which was pretty funny because she was also super emo. So two emos, <laughs> one folk band, made our own band so her and Lahela, our drummer have been friends since they were like five they went to school together like best buddies forever and Lahela drums and we were like that is sick like we don't know any drummer so let's get her in and then we had another person playing bass for a little while as well and we're all kind of from Balbriggan, Scaries, I live in Bettystown and Mead so yeah we just like started jamming in Lahela's sitting room when we were like 15, 16 and that's that was the band like that's how we got started we decided to I think our first gig was in like a Fero it was like a Faroga event, like a youth youth event in like <laughs> Bracken Court Hotel in Balbriggan Town. So that's kind of funny. And was it all covers at that point or did you have originals written? I think we oh we did have one original. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for talking about it, but it's kind of fond <laughs> fond memories now. But it was called seven PM and I'm already puking and it was about just like <laughs> us being like really irresponsible drinkers and uh getting really sick at parties and we were like, This is sick, this is so cool drink responsibly guys don't do that but we were like 15 That's 16 very so. municipal waste of you <laughs> yeah literally like um so we played that song but it was like mostly covers um a little bit i think we did tiger's jaw covers and like i think we did a royal blood cover like that's disgusting but it was it happened I and mean, we, we we did it um and then i think we started writing our ep 3am rituals we wrote that shortly after that i think when we turned I think it was just shortly before I turned 17 anyway and we released that and off the back of that that's how we kind of wow. got out there then and then I think we all started going to college as well so we were like in Dublin living in town in Dublin and 
like yeah just it just happened from there and then Ailish joined um and the other person we had playing the bass they left and now we're kind of have been and are working on a, a body of work an album of sorts i think um <laughs> but it's just taken a really long time but i think it's going to be good we have a lot of material we have applied for some grants and stuff like that to to get some money because like we have no money we got evicted as i said this year so it's rough if we don't get the grants then it's like oi well how are we gonna do this but uh yeah it's exciting it's exciting times because we're kind of putting a plan in place now to like pre-pro all our songs and like get them ready for like live shows as well as the studio and yeah it's, it's exciting i don't think we've gigged since like 2018 something crazy we were like we need to take a break and like write our record and since then it's just been like i don't know i feel like life's been working against us a little bit but that's okay like yeah. it takes a long time to make stuff sometimes i think especially if you're in like a collaborative group with like a lot of people to get everybody in the one yeah. room is super difficult and stuff like that but yeah that's our uh our disgusting origin story <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we're very we're very presented with uh this hyper capitalist thing these days of that everything is supposed to happen fast and it's supposed to be perfect or you're supposed to give up and that is definitely something to not pay any mind to i actually can't believe that you's uh, did 3 a.m rituals when you were so young that album is so good and Thank like you. it it like i am usually quite um uh, how do i put this uh i'm not a non-emotional person but it, it, it takes quite a lot to actually stir my emotions in the moment but man those the lyrics and just the way it all comes together like i thought i, I find those uh that album in particular very very emotional to listen to wow um so i'm really interested to see what like your uh next thing is going to be with uh, all that time uh you know it growing up over the last few years and, and putting it all together because yeah it was already really good back then thank how you long so have much you been... yeah no problem how long have you been playing guitar um on and off really since i was about 14 i kind of quit and gave up again and kind of did that kind of cycle of oh pick it up and then like eh i'm not doing it I think after as well, after we played in that folk band, um, I was feeling really self-conscious and insecure with just kind of the environment that was created there. It wasn't very nice. Um, mm. And I felt like, yeah, I was like a shit musician and like a piece of shit guitarist and like I didn't want to play for ages. Um, so I basically like had to relearn how to play guitar when we started Girlfriend, which is pretty funny. But I just, yeah, it came back to me, obviously. But then I really like practiced and played every day. And yeah, um, I don't really practice that much now, though. I kind of just pick it up when like the the mood takes my fancy or i feel like i'm i've got something kind of in my head to play um yeah and i think i'm kind of lucky in that way that i can put it down and pick it up and it's actually okay uh, i don't have to really like work hard which is kind of like i'm i don't know i feel bad about that as well because i'm like oh i'm so lazy but it's fine it works out it works out for me yeah i mean you did your practice you got good at it like you you know obviously like i i'm, I'm the same i know i should practice but like fuck i've got a full-time job and a bunch of other shit that i gotta do i can't be sitting around twiddling the guitar all day yeah like, exactly. when i was a teenager i can't be fucking rocking out to guitar pro for eight hours a day <laughs> yeah like, fucking but like picking up like doing these home recorded metal albums has really uh, helped me to shake the rust off like i think the the last ep i dropped the playing was like it, it's all right the, but the playing was like super sloppy because i was super rusty but like this new stuff i'm working on it's a lot tighter so like i, I yeah I, I find practice hard but like sitting down to record something I'm, I'm pretty much able to do it and i'm thankful i'm thankful for being able to being able to do that i i find it hard to practice unless there's like a reason you know like unless yeah. there's a gig coming up or whatever it's just like why would i sit around just playing to an empty room <laughs> you know exactly and I, I i'm not into like technicality i really don't know many scales i don't really do all of that i can't i did three years of music school like music college and i can't read music so waste of time pretty much on that end but i don't like i'm fine with that for me it's like really not music is or the music that i try to play is not about that it's not about like flashy kind of stuff um or even like particularly playing like very well i think it's kind of yeah like you said it's like we kind of focus on the emotions and like how it feels and like is it fun like that's our big thing all the time and it's like so corny and like yeah just it, are we having the crack is there going to be a point in this if we're not having the crack like no which i think is really important especially because like we do we have been together what like six years pretty much there's seven years probably oh my god i'm so old um and we want longevity with this we want to be able to like tour 
We want to be able to have good relationships with each other. We don't want pressure. We don't want ego. So it's really just like focused on us being friends and like writing about our vulnerabilities and like all of us relating to that and like wanting to play rock and music together pretty much. So yeah, like practicing. We only are practicing now pretty much because we're trying to get back into the swing of the live shows. We're trying to do the pre-pro for this beautiful record we're trying to make. And yeah, I find even before kind of going to a band practice, I wouldn't really practice that much. I'm a bit a bit rusty at the moment because I kind of forgot how to play a lot of the songs. It's been that long. So I have been kind of noodling a little bit every day, doing maybe like two hours um, guitar and bass just to go over the tracks. But apart from that, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I do not do the whole practice to the metronome thing, like all that jazz. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know all about all that, like... <laughs> I think it is super uh, that that it is a testament to how um, girlfriend is kind of a cut of cut above like it, like in my eyes because I'm not really I'm not too into like the type of music like genre I don't even know what genre you'd put it but I know when when I hear it that like you guys are playing but your music stands out and I really enjoy it and that's a testament to how you have that like focus on making your music fun where I think a lot of bands that play uh, music with that kind of like band arrangement and that kind of like guitar sound and vocals and stuff like that they're not concerned about making the music will enjoy the music enjoyable in any way and you can fucking tell and it's an incredible slog to get through oh for sure and like coming from bim where that is like the whole culture there is like ego you're the star baby even if you're like playing like nothing in the song it's like everyone everyone is like fighting for their place fighting for their spotlight and i fucking hate that shit i hate that shit so much i'm like i don't even don't even look at me when i'm on the stage like i'm doing my thing respect that like i'm not into the ego side of it at all but i think that was really hard to kind of shake coming out of that um circle of, of musicians bands and kind of live scene um please please give me all your hot takes on music school because i've been very kind of reactionary punk snot nose like <laughs> music students my whole life I've, I've found i found music students to be the bane of my fucking existence um i'd love to hear some of your hot takes i think that's on, so funny because on... i'm still the same i was totally like that like i my parents are like super socialist punks like don't give a fuck about nothing like they hate they always bring up simon cowell like they're still attached to simon cowell they're like that that manufactured shit man don't go don't go there and i'm like okay um but basically i hated the whole idea of going to a music college i thought it was bullshit i thought it was stupid i thought i'd hate all the people and i was a little bit right about that i actually went to music college because i basically dropped out of school and i was like i don't really have any options and all my friends were going to bim so i was like i bet i should just go to bim like and i paid for a plc to go there and i ended up actually like getting advanced entry into the ba because i got a distinction so that was super handy i was in the same year as all my friends then um but yeah, basically that was like my whole take even while I was there. I was like, this is fucking stupid. This is corny. I, I was very cynical back then. I'm trying to be less of a cynic now. But I was definitely like, I hate all these people. This is shit. This is bullshit. But like, it's really like, this sounds mean, but like, it's really fun to go there because you do get a laugh out of some people's music. And I personally would not be offended if someone laughed at my music or laughed at my performance or something like that or if like yeah if there was a tiktok that went viral of me that was like look at this fucking shit i'd be like that's pretty funny um so i personally enjoyed like when people's performances like cracked me up but it was very like not cool to like laugh and a lot of the mm. exams at the college actually were like on a stage and like everyone can just come watch you do your exam which is like usually an original song and boy boy whoa <laughs> it was funny it was really funny like I definitely met some nice people there, but met some really weird assholes there as well. There was like a big culture of like everyone dates everybody as well because it was like a small kind of Ugh. thing and all our college events were quite small and like, yeah, it was it was just weird though. It was just super weird. Like you go for a smoke outside the college building and like the singing teachers would come up to you and be like, what are you doing? You're destroying your life, your voice oh my God, I'm disgusted oh, by this. No. Like, don't come into oh, my class no. if you smell like cigarettes. So I'd be like, okay, I'm just not going to go to that class. <laughs> like, Te that's the thing teachers though. Teachers are, like, art teachers, like they're a whole different breed. Like, they're so weird. They're so weird. They're all like 50 and definitely took too much acid like in the 80s <laughs> and are a little bit has-been either. They're not really too successful anymore. 
but they have opinions and they have ego and they will like they will come for you like they will snap you in half it's hilarious though yeah <laughs> I'm trying to think of any all, other kind of funny all of my memories of music students from like dundalk are like people jamming or me like trying to share the music i was working on and then being like Oh, you're picking. Your picking is too too tight. You got to be looser. You know, you're you you you're that 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 picking hand. Is it, you know, it's it, it's not the right way to pick or like um. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a lot of a lot of pentatonic scales in your music. You should learn some more scales and <laughs> just like really really awful shit like that. Or or um, something I always get from from music students is uh, back in the day when I was a huge 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 thrash metalhead, and I and and I'd be showing anyone who even like you know almost like metal like oh check out this band they're really going to yeah. like ah uh, four 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 <laughs> playing in four four huh uh, don't quite like the that that kind of grimy production yeah, definitely like um i definitely experienced that with the kind of technicalities people like i actually studied songwriting when i was there so that's like arty farty bullshit how do you write a song like i went i just showed up to class like i barely showed up to class to be honest and when i did i was always so stoned or like drunk and like I didn't give a fuck about anything and it was fine to be honest it, it was fine and like the teachers didn't even really care um but yeah definitely like every other kind of stream of BIM is like um instrument based so they all have like technical classes they, they're they getting graded on their technicalities so they're like projecting this weird shit on you and you're like I don't care like I don't care that there's such and such a scale in this song or there's a lack of this or like this is sounding you're 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 you need to scoop your mids like you're too dry right now i'm like shut up shut the fuck up like i don't i literally don't care what you have to say like <laughs> i think as well for girlfriend like we were definitely really disregarded because of the type of music we play because of the lack of technicality and because um we're all kind of women or women looking anyway we pass as women so it's like i actually used to have this one person i'm not going to name him shame but if he listens to this he's going to know who he is and he used to actually get up on stage while I was like packing my stuff away and be like, your guitar sounds like shit. You need to get a new guitar. You can borrow my telly if you want next week. Like text me, text me. I'll sort it out for you. Or like, you need new pedals. Like you sound like shit. And it's like, why, why are you saying oh this God. to me? Like, and I've had that multiple times from different people. Like, oh, you, the classic, oh, you play really good for a girl. And it's oh like, it sounds so corny even like bringing that stuff up, but it is so fucking annoying. And like, I don't forget when people do that shit. And I, I found it funny, like, a lot of the people who did that kind of at the start of when we were playing around Dublin, by the end of when we were kind of wrapping up in 2018, when we were going to play Other Voices as our last show, they were in our messages, they're coming to our shows. You guys are sick. Yeah. I love women musicians. You guys rock. <laughs> and I'm like, get the fuck. I will literally fuck you up. Get the fuck out of my face. Like, I, I can't stand that shit. I can't stand it. Like, mostly because it's un like, just inauthentic or whatever, more than the misogyny that's there. I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. why are you licking my ass now? Because I've got a bit of clout. Like, I don't know. But yeah, that's kind of what music college was like. <laughs> they, people would just rag on you. And then it's like, oh, you were featured in Hot Press. Hmm. And then they start texting you, want to play a gig with me? And I'm like, yeah, no, no, not at all. Like, What's the most useful thing you learned about um, songwriting in a songwriting class? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of it was actually quite beneficial in the way that they do kind of prep you for if you want to actually get work as like writing for movies, writing for games, oh. writing for TV, like a lot of instrumental works. So, and like you'd have to compose something to, like a drone shot of like a forest that it looked like Twilight. So I actually really enjoyed that kind of stuff because I hadn't done any of that before. And I think, yeah, that kind of changed how I wrote music a little bit so I enjoyed that and I think the technical side of stuff as well like I had no idea really how to use equipment and we did have like tech classes and stuff like that so that was definitely helpful right um but like actually about like sitting down and writing a song like I don't even know if that was really taught to us it was kind of expected like you kind of already knew how to do that to get in and then it would be like techniques like you know that one where like you like open a book on a random page and like you take a line out and that's like the first line of your song it was a lot of stuff like that oh, yeah. like that can help if you have like writer's block and stuff like that or if you just want to try a new experience but it wasn't really like i don't know but that's the thing how do you concretely teach someone how to write a song yeah I unless I, they i suppose the best don't really know how to do i don't know the yeah. best thing you could do is just accidentally say something profound that like <laughs> changes their perspective mm -hmm. 
But uh, when you say that kind of like learning how to write commercial music and to different settings, how did that change how you look at songwriting? I think it actually really, it took me a while to actually shake that kind of stuff off. I think I became quite obsessed with like commercialism and like either wanting to not be commercial or either like no we need to do it in this song because we need to do such and such to like play such and such a gig or we need to this is obviously this is all pre-pandemic like when we were still yeah. actively gigging and stuff like that and yeah i think that it, it kind of negatively affected me i think it took me a really long time to like not analyze every song i listened to because that's what we would do for a lot of classes like you'd be there for 40 minutes and you'd listen to like half an album and yeah. like literally analyze every piece of the song the instrumentation the words the feelings the production everything like and it's yeah. that's good but for someone like me it made me like into like a control it freak makes about you, that kind it of makes stuff, you hate music like i've gone i've gone through that phase yeah. it makes you just stop enjoying because everything you every time you listen to something good you're like why didn't i write that i could never write that you know yeah and i found even outside of that like i didn't enjoy music at all because i was being so critical i was like the opposite of that sometimes as well i was like this well they should have done this oh i don't like this specific like tone in this i'm like and i'm looking back at it i'm like what the fuck was i talking about like shut up <laughs> yeah but that's where a, i don't know good it, friends and good drugs come in where you can just exactly. use other people's perspectives and chemically altered mindset to just experience things freshly definitely which i totally miss about being locked in my house as well i'm like can't wait to go out and just have like a crazy time and just <laughs> experience a concert or like i don't know yeah just some shit like that just go out and hear music live again for once well would be so good with the combined powers of yourself myself and all of our um crazy friends who who want all of our little cronies who want to do the same thing <laughs> uh we'll make it happen for sure and i think that's a good, oh, good yeah. place to to end the in the show uh, yeah sure thanks so much for for coming on it's been, uh, if you want to do any uh last minute i always do, <laughs> i always do this i'm always like hey do you want to like promote other artists or whatever and and every single time i've done this uh, the people have been like oh fuck i can't think of anything and i'm uh, always like oh i should tell people uh, to prepare something beforehand but i never do off the top of your head do you yeah now i'm like shit <laughs> i don't know um anyone connected to diy lk in limerick DIY OK is my life, baby. Um, really, really lovely collective of people. Lots of different types of music. Um, who else? Who else? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. There's like so many right now in my head as well. I'm like, who? Ah! <laughs> I need to stop doing this. I need to fucking tell, tell the guests beforehand. But I, I fucking, I don't remember to actually do it until the end of the podcast. So, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm fully rattled. <laughs> I should have prepared myself. I should have known you would ask me. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Um, but like, fuck Codaline and all those kind of bands. Don't listen to those guys. Nah, listen to whoever you want. I literally don't care. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> um, I have one more question for you um, before, we, before we go. Um, just yeah? curious. Um, the new Girlfriend album, are you going to studio or are you recording it at home? We are going to go to the studio because Ooh. we are not that good at recording at home. And we don't have any money or a lot of equipment. So it's actually quite difficult for the sounds that we'd like to do to do it at home so that's why we're applying for grants and funding um but we are looking at kind of or well not we're looking at in my mind i'm thinking about any kind of b-sides that we don't use or any songs that we trash well f from the album um i'd like to do those like at home and release that as its own like little thing Sweet. but we'll see how that goes we'll see how that goes yeah i mean run a kickstarter or something well, well maybe not a kickstarter because if you don't hit your goal you don't get your money yeah do that yeah thank you so much for having me this has been so much fun having a chat no bother um see ya thanks bye, bye.